Please join us for our entrance verse found on page four. Blessed be God the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world and receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him taken along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood before Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Responsorial. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, Praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory. Praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. 
the glory of Christ forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another. Agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. morning. Today, our church provides us an opportunity to remember and honor the most blessed Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Such a profound mystery that I could never hope to explain it to you. Such a profound mystery that I find myself going back to the ancients, going to the early Christians, the early Catholics, the great doctors of the church to look for insights so that I could share with you. And I found a beautiful thought. It was provided in a homily, a homily on the Blessed Trinity by St. Alphonsus Liguori. And his thought was not original. As smart as Alphonsus was, he himself built upon a thought first given by Pope St. Leo the Great. And so he took what Pope St. Leo the Great had said and he built upon it. So what I'd like to do this morning is take what Pope St. Leo the Great said, which was built upon by Pope by uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori, and then add my own two bits to it, to where hopefully I could give you a good, a good thought to reflect upon for the coming week. And so the thought, if we build upon these great minds, centers on the love of the most blessed Trinity for each one of us. A love that can be shown in each of the persons of the Trinity. God the Father in creation. God the Son in redemption and God the Holy Spirit in sanctification. So let's take a moment and break those three down individually and see if we can't uh, come away with something. We start with God the Father in creation, specifically in our creation. When we think of creation, we have a tendency to go back to the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. And to be honest with you, so much can be gleaned if one prayerfully reflects upon Genesis in the garden. One sees a lot 
in humanity, its inevitable fall, etc. But we profess God as eternal. Meaning in God there is no time. God is fully present in 2000 BC as he is fully present in 2080. That being said, when it came to creation, and we think of the world, the cosmos, we think of everything, specifically you, there has never been a time in the mind of God when he has not thought of you and creating you and loving you. What we profess and believe is that even if you or I was the only person that God would ever create, we ourselves were Adam, or for you ladies, were Eve, God would have still created the angels and the cosmos to give glory. He would have created everything for us because he loves us that much. So when we look at creation and we look at the way we treat creation, not solely just the way we treat our, our world, our planet, but the way we treat all of God's creation, the honor we give due to our guardian angel and to all angels, the honor we give to each other for each person is created in the dignity of God, the honor we give to ourselves. And the beautiful thing about it is since God is eternal in no time, that we can stop and we can reflect upon this fact. Because God loved us so much, he created our parents. And he created the people who inspired our parents. And he created other people who inspired them. And this beautiful aspect of virtuous living that has been slowly built upon and built upon, as I built upon Alphonsus, who built upon Leo. All of that eventually was brought and given to you to be fostered and nurtured in your own life so that you can be an active part in that beautiful glory given back to God. When you pass on the virtues that you have accepted the virtuous living that you have tried to live out the wisdom that you have gained when you try to pass that on to your children and grandchildren knowing that those great things can be passed down generations later you actively work in part of that because God loves the people that came after us the people that will come after us as much as he loves us. And we're part of that beautiful cycle. Now, when we reflect upon God the Son, an interesting thought occurred as I was reading various uh, works, and that is this. <coughs> when God the Father was, as we assume, getting ready to create. Before he had created anything, you remember in creation, God the Father is going to create the angels first, then he'll create the cosmos, and then us. Well, before God created anything, God in his mind knew that the moment he would create mankind in his image and likeness, i.e. with the free will, that somewhere Somewhere down the line, mankind would turn its back toward him. 
mankind would insult him by seeking something other than him, a lesser good per se. And so even before he created anything, his son, his divine word, Jesus, willfully chose to accept the cross of Calvary. Let that sink in for a second. Before God created, his divine word freely chose crucifixion as the perfect sacrifice in recompense to the insult given by not only Adam and Eve, but by given by every person in the history of mankind toward God when we each individually choose to turn our back toward him. That's how much God loves you. Even before anything, he knew and freely chose out of love, out of redeeming each one of us, crucifixion. It's amazing that his son would do that. And finally, God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit for our sanctification, how the Holy Spirit guides the early presbyters, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, the rest of the first apostles and their disciples, guides them to establish this Catholic church, the true church, founded for 2,000 years, poured forth from his side upon the cross. The Catholic church that we are members of, and how guided by the Holy Spirit, the church would inevitably have the sacraments, have the Bible, have theology, have its history. All these beautiful things that would eventually be proclaimed in the church. This Catholic Church all for our sanctification all for us to become holy to build each day a life of more holiness more virtue until one day in the future when we meet God we would meet him as an old friend Someone that we had gone to know and love because we had, through his church, grown holy, grown close to him throughout earthly life. And that's why when Jesus instituted the most blessed sacrament, I'm going to get ahead just for a second. For next week, we will celebrate Corpus Christi, the feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Understand this. When Jesus instituted the Eucharist at the Last Supper, and the church was doing this, because remember, as Scripture tells us, and as we relate in the Eucharistic prayer, the words of Scripture, what did Jesus say? Do this. Do this in memory of him. Not read a book, even as beautiful a book as the Bible, not practice our other devotions. Do this in memory of him. Offer the Eucharist. Offer that perpetual perfect sacrifice back to the Father. Not only for our sanctification, but as a perpetual statement of, I'm sorry. For none of us can stand in front of God without feeling some guilt and shame. But think of it, when the Holy Spirit is guiding the church to understand and to define clearly its teaching on the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist, the church would eventually say that the Eucharist is the body, blood, 
soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, if we said today that we have in behind the church a time machine, and with that time machine, you can go back in time and you can go back and sit at the feet of Jesus with the original 12 apostles, I promise you, we would have a line stretching from here to Birmingham of people wanting to go back. Oh my gosh, I get to go back and sit in the presence of Jesus. However, every Sunday, Jesus is made present upon our altar. For where the body of Jesus is, there must also be his soul. And with his soul, there is all the divine attributes that Jesus possessed in his earthly life that he still possesses. And can you truly separate the divine word from the body and soul of Jesus? No. They are united, the divine word, the body, the soul, all in the beautiful hypostatic union. Jesus is united. And where the divine word is, there must be the one who speaks the word, the Father. And where the word and the father are, there must also be the love shared between them, the Holy Spirit. In essence, when we receive the body of Christ in a state of grace, being free from the stain of mortal sin, we receive not only Jesus' body, his soul, we receive the divine word of God, we receive the Father, we receive the Holy Spirit, all of the blessings, all of the beatitude of heaven is found upon the altar. Every day, a Catholic priest offers the Eucharist. And the Holy Spirit has allowed us to start to understand that through the generations. And the Holy Spirit has guided the church. Now that is even, and this is the beautiful thing, we can point to the church and we say, look at all of the weaknesses of the church, its leaders. Some of them have been very, very bad. <clears throat> Some of them have been very, very good. But if this was a man-made organization, she would have fallen apart years ago. It must be guided by the Holy Spirit. For look at the great history of people who have given their lives for this. And look how the Holy Spirit continues to call people to come to share the mission. You see, that's the beautiful thing we never think about. Let me put it this way. The Holy Spirit loved you so much that he would invite a country boy from Louisiana to take a share in the priesthood of God so that one day while you sit here in Chickasaw, Alabama, you can receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity from a guy from Louisiana. That's how much the Holy Spirit loves you. And in other parts of our diocese, the Holy Spirit has inspired men from Poland, <coughs> from Africa, from India, from Alabama, from other parts of the United States, just to be here. Why? To take care of God's people here in this archdiocese. That's how much the Holy Spirit loves each one of us, that he will inspire, lead, and guide so that you can be sanctified, so that you can become holy. In all these things, the Holy Spirit leads us. So we conclude by looking at all three persons of the Blessed Trinity, and we can see repeatedly over and over and over again how much each person of the Trinity expresses 
each one of us, their love for us. I'll conclude with an image, my own, and hopefully it does justice. But if you could think of it as a giant wheel, a wheel, that from the Trinity, each person in the Trinity, is poured out love to you and to me. And we receive and accept this love. And then, in the way we treat God, neighbor, and each other, we return that love back to the Father and the Son and the Spirit who first loved us. It's perpetually in motion each moment of our lives, receiving, accepting, and returning the love that was first given to us. May the Holy Trinity lead us and guide us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand for our profession of faith and our freedom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, we offer to God our prayers and our needs. For Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people trusted their charge, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in the sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined to the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for you, for you, our parish family, for St. Thomas the Apostle and St. Bridget. For you who are here, and for those of our family who are not here today. For all of you, for God's blessings upon you, this Mass will be prayed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, God. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude on this day in honor of the Trinity with the glory be praised. Glory, glory be to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who would become for us the bread of life. Bless us, God. God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God. Praying, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for I benefit the Father the whole church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim to and seraphim who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim holy holy holy, holy, holy lord, lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim the Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that for taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. <laughs> together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the life of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the age, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the same command of form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Live not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, the prince of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, the prince of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, the prince of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. meeting verse found on page 91. Since you are children of God, God has sent into the hearts the spirit of his son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father.
Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament of Lord our God bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. 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 Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.